Hey guys, even here, in this video we're gonna start with a physique update of our current classic physique Mr. Olympia champion Chris Bumstead and he seems to be pretty active lately on social media as far as uh, physique updates, training videos and it looks like he has been pushing it lately in terms of training and I'm guessing probably in terms of gear he's probably like blasting right now if you look at his shoulders, his arms, his his chest, you can see that like he's in a good shape and he's still pretty full and, and big and round. And that probably means that he's using more, more than what he's used to in the offseason, more than he was using before, because he has gotten much bigger. Now if you take a look at his arms, his arms are not looking small at all. Look at the front double bicep. I mean those arms are really big. Yeah, the insertions are not very nice, but he certainly has added a ton of muscle to those arms. Uh, now, as far as the legs, his legs are always really great. And I don't really see the point of him <laughs> freaking squatting six plates. Yes, guys, six plates for, I believe, six reps. That is a really, really heavy. That's a real heavy weight. Most uh, top open pros can't squat this much. No, no, most of them cannot. Most of them go up to like four, five plates, six plates. That's a strong bodybuilder. Not to mention classic physique. So somebody in classic physique squatting six plates. That's that's crazy. But this is the classic physique, Mr. Olympia. And uh, yeah, I, I just don't really get the point why he's pushing his legs this much. Also, he's doing these uh, Bulgarian lunges with uh, 150 pounds per side. That's 300 pounds, and I don't know if you guys tried Bulgarian lunges or Bulgarian squats, but these are really hard to do, these are really uncomfortable, and I think it's very dangerous as well, because you're stretching your legs a lot, and I think I injured myself once doing these, and I haven't done them since, but you know, if it doesn't challenge, it doesn't change you, so this will definitely grow his legs quite a bit, but I don't know what's the point, why does he even need to grow his legs anymore, his legs were freaking huge last time we saw him on stage. If he grows them anymore from this point, it's gonna start to look, you know, not very classic. Me personally, I find his 2017 physique probably the best for classic physique. He didn't win that year, he was second, so obviously based on the standards, based on the criteria, the judging criteria, 2020 look is definitely obviously better, but me personally, when I see this physique in 20, 2017, I don't know, it seems like his waist was smaller, he was like, yeah, he was overall smaller, but he was kind of more, I don't know, more streamlined, more aesthetic. He wasn't complete here, though later he improved a lot and that's why he won the damn thing, but here he was very aesthetic, you know, smaller, but classic, more classic than now, I would say. And what throws me off is probably the size of the legs. Now, I'm not saying anybody can take him out, I think he's the best classic physique guy in the world right now, by far, nobody comes close, but I'm just saying, if these legs grow a little bit more, he's gonna look like a freaky open bodybuilder, more than like a classic physique guy, and that's all I'm saying, I don't get the point for squatting 6 plates, soon enough he's gonna be squatting 7 plates, so I can see that, so his legs are gonna be humongous, I'm sure, the Mr. Olympia, hopefully it's not gonna ruin his balance and his symmetry, but, you know, he's training hard, he loves it, he wants to be strong, as he says in the caption, he enjoys this kind of training, is it gonna ruin his physique? Maybe, maybe not, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, next we have Keon Pearson, who is not going back to classic, as he said, it was pretty obvious, based on all these physique updates, in which he looks absolutely massive, ridiculously massive, look at these lats! Look at the width, look at his back, it's freaking insane. So originally what he said is he wants to go down to classic and just do it naturally, but apparently based on all the photos, all the physique updates, I mean we all saw that he is not natural, that he is pushing stuff, that he is pushing things, you know, hard. And now we also have a confirmation, it is uh, Guy Sister Nino saying it in Fuad Abiyad's podcast that, uh, that Keon is not going back to Classic, he's gonna be doing the 212, which I'm sure most of you could have guessed, because he does look pretty freaking massive, right? The only question is how good can he really be 
in 212 because 212 seems to be getting really competitive lately the 212 guys are winning open pro shows so it's gonna be tough beating some of the top guys can he win a 212 show and qualify for the mr olympia sure he can but can he be like in in top three in 212 you know that's tough that's tough we'll see it depends on uh, whether Derek Lansford moves to the open whether Sean Clarida does open or 212 because he's qualified for both you know there are other guys who are really good like Kion, he, he lacks that maturity the conditioning I think it's also it's mainly conditioning I don't think he's suffering enough he's not uh, trying hard to get in shape I think that's mainly it but other than that you know he his physique has grown so much in such a short time span so i think he needs to hold on to it for a little bit longer uh, he's a young guy he's like 26 now so i'm guessing it's gonna take him a little longer uh, to actually be competitive in the 212 in the in the mr olympia i'm talking about if you're gonna consider him like a top runner to to win or to be like a top three uh, so I think he has the potential, he has all the tools, no doubt about that, everybody can see that, he basically has no flaws, the only flaw that he had was his chest, and that's not really a major flaw, and he fixed that quite a bit, like it's barely even a weakness now, so he has everything, it's just gonna be a matter of time, like uh, for him to mature completely, uh, for that muscle to get a little bit more like grainy, you know what I'm talking about, and um, yeah, I think this guy with his height, with his shape, which is absolutely incredible, with everything that he has, all the tools, he can be the Mr. Olympia champion in 212 someday, maybe in a couple of years. What do you guys think? If you are looking for freakiness with aesthetics, then Michal Krizo is your guy or was your guy, because take a look at his stomach. First time, this is the first time I'm seeing this guy with a bubble gut. But I guess that's what it takes to be a top open pro. Which top open pros in IV Pro League don't have at least a little bit of a bubble gut. And they know how to control it. This is the off season, as you can see in the caption, which, which I find, I don't know, interesting at least. I don't know if this guy is this strat in the off season usually. Maybe he tried to maintain a low body fat percent for some reason. But maybe he's prepping, maybe he's uh, just trolling us, which is something he does very often. Anyways, he is humongous right now. Look at the guy in the background <laughs> watching him. I'm sure my, my jaw would drop as well if I saw this guy in person. Because this is just insane. I mean... Uh, uh, he's actually tall he's not even short and he's so blessed with his crazy muscle bellies and with the ability to put on so much muscle especially in those freaking arms i mean he just looks like an absolute freak so i don't know what his goals are is he is he ever planning on trying himself in ivy pro league He's very popular in the United States, even though he doesn't compete over there, a lot of people know about him because of social media. I think he should do it before it's too late, before the bubble gut is fully formed. Now it's, it's forming slowly, but it's still okay, I guess. I'm sure when he diets down, when he doesn't have to eat a lot of food, uh, it's gonna go down, but like, how much is it gonna go down? I listened to Fu and Abiyad talk about this, uh, he had some serious waist thickening problems and this is him 2017 at the Arnold Classic, which is his worst edition, his last time he competed and this is basically what he's remembered as unfortunately by many and uh, he says that like uh, he never really worried about his gut, he, his waist getting thick but it was like every year it was a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker and uh, he always thought when he diets down it's gonna go away, it's gonna be fine but every time he would diet down it would stay a little bit more and by the end of his career it wasn't even fine, it wasn't okay, it was pretty bad so the same thing may happen to Michal Krizo unless he's careful, unless he's mindful of this problem, unless he worries about it and does and does what it takes to actually keep that waistline in check. So he should definitely take a lesson from Fuad Abiyad and not let this happen to his amazing physique before he has even made the transition and tried to be a good IFBB pro and get to the Iron Classic, get to the Mr. Olympia. So he should definitely worry about this and be careful because it's starting to show slowly. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.